Hey everybody, well it's been a while since I did a video and not by choice, things have been pretty busy with new product releases at ZWO including the fabulous little Sea Star. I've also been travelling, done some star parties, helped out at a lot of open nights at the Cass Observatory this winter and basically ran out of time. However, that's all changing, spring is here, clocks have changed and we're now back to making videos. So do stay tuned for lots of new stuff coming here on Astroworks including lots more on Sea Star, new products and information and some news about the camera angle adjuster. Now the little AM5 and AM3 harmonic drive mounts have become a popular series of mounts in the short space of time they've been on the market. That's not really surprising. They're small, lightweight and extremely powerful for their size and combined with the carbon fiber tripod they make for a great portable setup. The AM5's new smaller brother, the AM3, is will be here with us by the time you watch this video too, which extends the range engine further. And we'll be covering a review of that off right here on Astroworks very soon. You can also watch the recent live broadcast we did for some details on that as well. ZWO so have recently released new firmware updates, adding some new features to the AM series mounts, and that created a flurry of questions of how do I upgrade my mount firmware? So in today's video, I'll cover off how you can easily update your AM series mount and the firmware in the hand controller, and there are a few ways you can do this. So as always, let's dig into the details. Hey folks, my name's Simon, welcome to Astroworks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, full of hints and tips on how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. So I've been using the AM5 mount for a long time now. I was an original beta tester and I'm still heavily involved in the development and testing of these mounts. And I still personally love both of mine that I purchased. They're lightweight, highly portable, really strong, combined with the ease of use, they're a dream to use. And I absolutely love the seamless integration with the ASI Air, which is really a match made in heaven. These really are a good choice if you have an ASI Air, but they're as equally at home using Ascom, of course. The new AM3 also adds to that flexibility too, being lighter and even more compact. One of the great features of the AM series is the simple process involved in upgrading your mount and hand controller firmware. If you've ever tried upgrading your mount firmware on a non-ZWO mount, then you may recall how hard this can be at some times. Having to find the right cables to plug into your mount, then searching the internet for the update software and the right firmware images can all be a real pain. And did you remember where you last put that RS-232 to USB adapter on that RJ series cable set needed to update the hand controller? Neither can I. On the ASI Air they made this process real easy to do and you don't need to worry about having to find a cable, download a firmware image or mess around with any update tools. But before we go into that process let's first take a look at the config page for the AM series mounts as this has a few things you need to look at before updating. There are a few ways you can access the AM mount configuration page. The simplest and easiest is to use any web browser on a phone, tablet or a PC. You can use any flavour of PC, Mac or a Linux box as long as it has a Wi-Fi connection and a web browser installed. Turn on your AM series mount with the hand controller connected and then connect your PC, phone or the tablet to the mount's Wi-Fi signal. That's the one that's identified by AMH and then a serial ID. Unless you already went into the config page previously and changed it, in which it's going to be something else. The default Wi-Fi password is 12345678, and again, unless you change it for something else previously. This should then connect your computer to the mount's Wi-Fi. With the PC now connected to your mount, open a web browser and enter the IP address of 192.168.4.1, unless, like earlier, you also change this and have a different IP set. This will now load the mount's configuration page. So let's have a quick look at those pages as we may need to make some changes here, depending on if you've used the mount before via Wi-Fi. On the landing page, you can see an overview of the mount and the hand controller configuration settings. The home page shows the mount and hand controller firmware version state and the Wi-Fi information for the hand controller, such as the device name, its password and IP address, as well as the port being used by the hand controller. This is useful if you plan to wirelessly connect by ASI Air. 
You can also phone the wireless LAN information here too, such as the wireless LAN SSID it's connected to and the allocated IEP address and port in use. To do over-the-air upgrades, you do need to have your mount connected to the internet. And on the network tab, you can use the SSID picker and choose a Wi-Fi access point you'd like to connect the mount to. You can customize the Wi-Fi name for the hand controller here as well. That's handy if you go to star parties and want to make it easier to find your own Wi-Fi signal amongst the crowds. You can also set your own Wi-Fi password here and reset it if you want. To carry out an upgrade, the mount needs to be able to reach the internet. So here, under the Wi-Fi settings, you can add the name and password of an internet-enabled access point. This can be your home network or even a hotspot running on your phone. It doesn't really matter as long as you're able to reach the internet via it. A tip here though is if you plan to use a wireless connection to the mount in station mode from an ASI Air, then you can enter the same Wi-Fi SSID as the one set on the ASI Air. This will mean the ASI there can be set to remote connect to the AM mount via Wi-Fi. Now the firmware tab is where you'll check on the available firmware status and update the mount if required, and it really is easy to do. With the mount connected to an internet-enabled Wi-Fi access point, you can click the firmware tab and see the mount and hand control of firmware versions. If the mount detects it or the hand controller needs updating, you'll be able to see this by the presence of an update button. Press update and the mount will go away online, download and install the updates needed, and then restart the mount and hand controller after it's completed all the updates. That's it. It took me longer to describe it than it really would to do it. It really is simple. Now I'm going to show you another way to connect to your AM series mount, and that's using the ASI mount app. It's worth noting that the ASI mount app isn't just a way to upgrade the mount either. It does offer much more than that, and this is why you need to head over and grab that app now on your Play Store. The mount app is available for both iOS and Android, although there are some subtle differences depending on what mount you're using. The AM5, for example, connects to the mobile device using Wi-Fi only, while the AM3 can also connect via Bluetooth. Only the iOS version currently supports the AM3 Bluetooth connection, and there's no Bluetooth on the AM5, so this has to remain on Wi-Fi mode only. If you are using the AM3 via Bluetooth, you'll have to swap back to the Wi-Fi connection using the Switch Mount button in the ASI Mount app to access the Mount Management page. If you can't see the button on your iOS device, it's worth checking if you're already in Wi-Fi mode. The app is downloaded from the App Store, so head on over there and download and install the app first for your phone. Once you've got the app installed, then connect your mobile device to the Mount's Wi-Fi. Remember, that's the one that's identified by that AMH and then that serial ID. Again, the default password is the same, 1 through to 8. Now you can connect to the mount by pressing the mount icon on the left hand menu. If you're using the AM3, I strongly recommend you choose the Wi-Fi mode first until you have all the updates done. Then you can swap to Bluetooth. Once connected, the mount app allows you to control your mount so you can slew around the sky using the on-string joystick or the hand controller and it will display this in the same style as Sky Atlas as the ASI Air. And you can use the app in the same way, like choosing tonight's best objects, searching for a target, or just panning around the sky, pinching and zooming using your fingers. Now, of course, the app isn't a full-blown ASI Air, so there's no imaging capability, and for that you need to add the ASI Air hardware, but it does offer some useful features like a configurable field of view box and the ability to manage things like the map settings to give you a fabulous tool for grab-and-go operators. It's also worth remembering the app has no polar alignment feature, so if you want to polar alignment the AM series mount, you're either after going to use an ASI Air or something else, either like like a shop cap, for example. But where the app really does come in handy is that it has some features that are not in the ASI Air app, and that's why I highly recommend you download this standalone app even if you own ASI Air. Tap the mount icon on the left-hand menu and you enter the mount settings page. Here you can see the mount's current RA and deck position, the mount time and lat long. You can turn the tracking mode on and off here as well, and also adjust the tracking rate to sidereal, solar or lunar rates, or turn off the tracking entirely. In the settings page you can also find a handy reminder of how to change the equatorial or alt-as mode settings. 
A handy tip here is that you can do this via the hand controller as well. Press and hold the C, which is the cancel button, on the hand controller while powering the mount on to change mode. The mode LED will change from red for equatorial mode to green for alt as mode. To change mode again, just repeat the same process and it switches back. The next feature is not in the ASI Air app, and that is the ability to fine-tune the home position. Now, a lot of people ask me, why does my mount not point exactly up when parked in equatorial mode? And the simple answer is, the slight offset helps the sensors find the home position when you're using that go to home command. This slight offset seems to annoy some people greatly, but it's purely cosmetic, has no bearing on operation. But if it does annoy you and you can't live with it, then you can use the calibrate home position function in the app to fine tune it and save it to the mount. This position is also saved for other devices such as ASI Air and ASCOM. It's also worth noting that the latest AM3 home location was centered right out of the box in my test unit, so that didn't need to be tuned at all. The next useful feature is the ability to access the mount management page from within the app, and this is where the app can help you update your mount. It really uses the same process as accessing it from a web page on your PC. It launches a small browser page and enters the mount management page as in the method that we covered earlier with the computer. Everything else is the same as the PC version pages, just on your phone. Your mount will still need Wi-Fi access to the internet to pull down firmware, but once you're all set, you can easily in initiate a check of the firmware and an update from within the app itself right there on your phone. So if you do use a tablet or phone to control the ASI Air, then you can have this app installed right alongside. Don't forget in the iOS version, you can also access the AM3 via that Bluetooth connection. Now in a moment, I'll share a really awesome handy tip for you if you're as absent-minded as me when it comes to remembering Wi-Fi passwords. But if you enjoyed today's video and found it useful, then please give that like button a thumb, and we highly recommend you subscribe so that we can notify you when we publish new content. Now that handy tip for you. Suppose you forgot the Wi-Fi username and password or can't access the mount by the app anymore. Well, it's pretty easy to reset this without actually going into the app. With the mount turned off, press and hold the track and cancel buttons on the hand controller. That's the T and the C buttons. And then while holding those down, turn on the mount. Continue holding them for about five seconds until the hand controller fast LED starts to flash rapidly, then let go. This will reset the Wi-Fi settings and you can now access the hand controller Wi-Fi using the default ID and passwords. Simple, you've got access again. Now there is one more way of updating your mount and this is really, I think, a backup as most people will have the mount connected to an internet connected Wi-Fi access point and I highly recommend using the app as this will update the hand controller and mount firmware at the same time. If you're an ASCOM user then you'll be very familiar with the ASCOM control panel that is presented when the mount is connected. But the ASCOM panel also holds a firmware upgrade tool. Indeed, at one point during early testing this was the only way to upgrade the mount. So UASI mount app users can be thankful for that work. Inside the ASCOM driver panel you can find two ways of upgrading your mount firmware. Firstly, you can choose the over-the-air option which will do this automatically if you've already set that mount Wi-Fi up. If you haven't done that, then I recommend you pop onto a PC in a web browser and update it. And then from the ASCOM app, you can choose the online update option. It'll follow the same path as the um, PC or the mobile phone app and it'll just do it automatically. For any reason you're having issues with online updates then you can contact the ZWO support desk and ask for the bin file for the update. This needs to be accessible to the file explorer in the ASCOM control panel then you can update this via a local file. Now, that's not normally necessary. If you're getting an error message, such as cannot get data, then go away and check those Wi-Fi settings or jump onto a phone with a hotspot. So these are the methods available to allow you to update your AM series mount. So, which one do I recommend? Well, it has to be the app. It's simple and easy to use, and you can have this loaded on your phone and always accessible. You can even set a hotspot on your phone and update it in the field, without a cable in sight. And don't forget, 
AM3 Bluetooth connection as well, and the use of station mode in ASI Air to connect to your AM mount wirelessly. So I hope you found that it's really simple getting access to the mount config pages and the firmware states and applying firmware upgrades to your AM series mount using the web management page via a PC, a tablet, via the ASI mount app, or via the ASCOM control panel, and all without a firmware image in sight. Don't forget that the Mount app is a free download, so I highly recommend you head over to your app store and download that now. It's a really simple tool to use. You'll find yourself reaching for it time and time again. And remember that the ZWO website has downloads for manuals, ASCOM drivers for the AM series mounts, and all of the ZWO product range. We'll have lots more handy tips here real soon, so stay tuned until then. My name's Simon, you've been watching Astroworks, wishing you clear skies from New Zealand.